there viewers and welcome back to the self-made auto channel we got us a Toyota with the money light on and no speedometer that's what the feller tells me he's trying to get it inspected and he's an older gentleman and is having a little bit of a hard time with this whole inspection thing and the lights and why he can't get a sticker uh, another shop sent him up here so I could look at it because they said he had some electrical problems with the light coming on and off it was even hard to understand the shop so I figured what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll see what's going on see if we can get the rundown on it I assume it's going to be something you know speed sensor related uh, being a speedometer doesn't work so he says we'll let the uh, launch here get hooked up this is the X431 in case you're wondering about that go so this communicates some of this is a uh, old four tundra I think sounds like the four seven in it all right we want to automatically search this is tundra get where hopefully you guys can see it here we go and we'll go right to control units and we'll go powertrain engine fault codes PO 500 current history and pending okay so Toyota's typically they're uh, I'm trying to think the older ones here they would send the speed signal from the cluster to the ECM and the cluster typically would get it from the ABS if, if this one works the same so what we'll do, remember, at least that's how older Toyotas were, so it was something like that. I believe it came from the cluster to the ECM, and the cluster either got it from, you know, A, the speed sensor on the trainee, or the wheel speed sensors, you know, from the ABS. So we will, and I do see the ABS light is on also, so that's kind of what tipped me off to that, uh, possibly working that way. We'll hop in here some data stream. We'll pull up speed sensor, we'll just kind of go back and forth here in the parking lot see if uh, see if we get any data seems to be communicating kind of slow here let's see let's see if it's under vehicle speed sensor we'll skip right down to the V's real quick here vehicle speed look at that and then just to make sure our data is live we'll get something else on here it's live we got engine RPMs uh, engine speed I probably skip right past it I always skip past everything. Engine speed. It's in with the ease. Go figure. I always like to have something on the screen that's, you know, live. That way you can make sure your scan tool is working good because you never touch your scan tool. That's rule number one. All right, so that seems to be live. Let's, uh, whoa, let's pull ahead here. Let's not hit this car. Nope. Nothing there. Let me back up. Five, six miles an hour there all right so there is no vehicle speed signal there okay being that the ABS lights on let's be smart about this before we look up any data we'll pop back out of here and we will go what, chassis right ABS <coughs> let's just read the codes out of here see if that gives us any clue Rear speed sensor, right hand circuit, rear speed sensor, left hand circuit, and foreign object is attached to tip of right speed sensor, right hand. So when you see this car, I just did a, I don't know what it was, 05 or 06 Forerunner uh, yesterday that had this code in it. And this code is more like um, we would see this commonly on domestics that would say, like, you know, erratic wheel speed sensor or wheel speed signal detected. Because uh, I remember reading code setting criteria on that truck, that's basically what it said, you know, that it was receiving, you know, erratic signal. I think at that point it assumes that there's some kind of foreign material on the tip of the sensor, you know, causing erratic speed. And in the case of that Toyota, I should have recorded it, it was really cool. Uh, threw a scope on it, drove it, and it was pretty intermittent. All of a sudden the speed signal would go wonky. Long story short, 
uh, I got a new speed sensor for the left front because when it worked I could identify that the magnetic tone ring was good uh, so I wasn't worried about that however I thought the sensor was going crazy so I you know the sensors rusted in there I broke it off got it all out and what happened is the spring that goes around the inner wheel seal had popped out and it was floating around in there and occasionally would come up on the magnet and get jammed between the speed sensor tip um, and the speed sensor so that's what was causing erratic signal on that of course these are in the rear it's a solid axle a little different setup but let's uh I get sidetracked here. Let's look at some data stream. We'll see if we can just look at all four wheel speed signals. And then, of course, we'll verify this on scan data, but it wasn't too long ago I worked on one of these and it's kind of going off memory. Front left, front right, rear left, rear right. Let's just pull it ahead again. Drive. All right, that kind of matches our code. Hope you guys can see that. Let's just back up again here. All right. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do at this point, I'm not going to, I'm going to drive the car. We're going to pull in. I'm going to verify that PO500. We'll look up code setting criteria for it. And then if it indeed does get its signals from the ABS unit, I'm going to assume it gets it from the rear or a rear. And we'll take it from there. It only makes sense. PO500, ABS light on, speed sensors aren't working. So let's do that. We'll take it from there. So I just pulled up on Mitchell here because I wanted to read. And it says here, uh, the number one vehicle speed sensor outputs four pulses for every revolution of the rotor shaft, which is rotated by the transmission output shaft via the driven gear. Uh, let's see. Then it is, I was right, it is sent through the speedometer and then to the ECM. So that's kind of interesting. I was looking at, like I said, I was looking at one of these the other day and it worked totally different. I thought the two wheel drives, that was the case. Hey, well, I'm going to verify this through another source just, just to be sure. I could be wrong. It could be the way it goes. Maybe his ABS light's been on forever. Uh, that's something we're going to talk to the customer about too. Let's, uh, let's keep trucking here. Just like you need more than one scan tool in the shop, you also need more than one information source. So I looked up here uh, for the PO500, and this one is totally different than what we were just reading on Mitchell. Uh, vehicles equipped with automatic transmission to detect the vehicle's speed using the skid control ECU and wheel speed sensor. Uh, the wheel speed sensor monitors wheel rotation speed signal to the skid ECU. The ECU converts the wheel speed signal into four pulses, so that's the same, and transmits it to the engine computer via the combination meter. So same concept, except it says it goes through the ABS unit instead of using the transmission speed sensor. Uh, yeah, so we probably should have checked park neutral input. Um, so that's interesting. All the other conditions here are the same, the same charts as far as monitoring strategies. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah, from four wheel drive ECU to the combination meter. All right, well, we've got something to go on and you guys can also see a couple things. And this one being, turn that off, um, you know, two different data sources two different answers uh, and this is a dilemma sometimes you'll come into something like this well which one's right well we're gonna find out waiting for Mrs. O to get off the phone that's another one we gotta look at Xterra supposedly stuck in four low
What's up, Mrs. O? Uh, just waiting for you. Is my lunch ready? Yep. Ooh, look at that. What that thunder we got over here? Oh. Explain to us what we're eating. Looks like chicken salad. Do I need to explain salad. it? Chicken salad? chicken salad? Oh, you're dark. Oh, there you are. See your fancy hair. Oh, gosh. <laughs> got her all curled up. Yep. Just for you. Thanks. Alright, lunch is over. Old Krusty is up in the air. She is white and crusty. We will begin with the visual inspection, and as you can see, this is the dilemma in the winter time. So there is one speed sensor right there. The wires run around town. Got another one there. All this stuff is looking angry. And then they go up, up to this harness here, which is supposed to be hooked to the tank. And it is not. Let's see what we can do without. You know what? Let me set this camera down here, fellas. So this oops, dribbling all over me. We've got this. I assume it's supposed to be, you know, so. <laughs> looky, looky. So one of these wires, I don't know which side this goes to. Over to the right side. This white wire looks like it is, yep, look at that. Ready, watch. One, two, pop. That one is rubbed right through. <laughs> this wire here is broke. <laughs> this wire here is broke. Enhance. Enhance. So look at that. Ooh, power visual inspection. So we got one broken wire, two broken wires, and then the wire that we just popped off that was, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it looks like it was rubbed. Well, fancy. Um, this truck is in rough shape. Unenhanced, unenhanced. I mean, she's, you know, when that's your gas tank strap, you know what I mean? So, I think what we'll do we don't even know if these speed sensors are good, but I think I tell Mrs. No way how we do, chop it off. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna chop it off. We're getting rid of this connector. This thing is pooched anyways. Let's do it. Let's just chop it off. And uh, let me get out the old knife. I don't know if the blade's any good. Oh, it is. I think it's razor sharp. Let's open her up here a little bit, see what we're dealing with. Well, that was easy. We didn't have to get out any kind of fancy meters or anything. Let's open this up. All right, probably a twisted pair. Let's get up in here without cutting anything else. All right. They're twisted. Twisted like sister, you know, get it? And then we'll find out who's who here. Looks like black goes to yellow. We'll do these one at a time because we don't want to mix up. Oh, she just pooped again. We don't want to mix them up. And we'll just uh, chop it off and uh, butt connector them or whatever, heat shrink them. I think that's the best option for this fella. And then we'll go drive it. Ah, there's a big nasty over there. Right, let me get some tools. first without doing any damage okay come on baby you know you want it there we go trying to get us a little bit more exposure to get us a little bit more out here in the open in case we gotta chop back into this. All right, before we break anything off here, we're gonna chop this one. All right. Now, it looks like 
Looks like they were sealed in there. Yeah. How many times have I flipped this blade over? That side looks pretty good still. You can only flip them over once, but I tend to do it like six or seven times. It never gets any sharper. Let's see if we can just gingerly do this without making blood squirt. Oh, you know, I, mean, I can feel that thing going right through my finger. Okay. Like a surgeon. Oh, that's a big turd. You just don't want them going down your neck. You hear just slopping on the ground up there. If any of you guys are mechanics down south and you've never had the joy of working on a vehicle covered with salt and snow, well, you don't know what you're missing. Not much, I'll tell you that. Oh, come on. Mm. I don't want to cut through that insulation too deep because I don't want it to nick the wire. she is. A baby is born. There's that. Come in there, chop it off. Clean this up a bit. So it doesn't look like some caveman was down here. Get your finger out of the way, fella. There we go, there is one side, okay. Now you trust me. Oh, she's still a little black there. Let's chop her off one more time. Let's go get a pair of wire strippers so I'm not like a caveman. And then we said black to yellow. Everybody remember that, black to yellow. That's the only important thing we need to know. Black to yellow, white to black. Okay. All right. Let's see, these are two different colors here. That one's orange. Do it. Okay. Black to yellow. Strip that one. Strip that one. Now we're going to use a soldering heat shrink connector. These are sent to me by old Johnny A, we'll call him. He sent me a pack of these a while back, wanted me to try them. So we're gonna give it a go. Let's see if I'm gonna be able to slip that on there far enough. Son of a monkey, I'm not. Sorry, Johnny A, we're not gonna be able to give this a go because I can't slip it up past far enough to mate the other wire to it properly and give it a twist. All right, plan B. Nope, we're back to plan A. My red crimp and seal connectors are not here yet. I just ordered some the other day, so we're gonna take our time to just open this up. I'm gonna cut that tape ever so gingerly. All right. Now we'll go back to plan A. Just slip it on. Put one on yellow, white. No, it's black. My wire is looking a little tad on the crusty. Well, it's not really crusty, but you know how they get when they get oxidized and they turn a little bit black. It's kind of what it's looking like. So 
this heat shrink has a glob of solder in the middle of it that when we heat it, it should solder and then seal. Oh, sugar. All right, put the torch down, fella. I want to make sure everything's at where it needs to be. She got a little floppy on me here. Probably should just chop that whole connector off there, but I don't want to mix anything up just yet. Oh, that is hot on the digits. There it goes. I just seen the solder flow. That's pretty slick. Okay, let me let that cool down for just a second, then I'm going to finish heat shrinking it. So I'll make sure that solder solidifies. And we'll zoom in on the next one so you guys can enjoy that moment as much as I did. What's up, Mrs. O? Oh, it's going to come talk to you about deep personal things. But Go for it. Oh. Whoa! Oh, God. That almost got that, you, see? I think, I think that's a sign. That's a sign right there. I think it's not right me here right now. Tundra just pooped on you. <laughs> oh, gosh, that would have been awful if I was standing there. It would have been funny as a mo. As a, I'd have to go home. How funny would that be? Not funny at all, because I'd miss yeah. you. We'd both be suffering. We would. Me more than you. What? I seriously was just going to talk to you. About serious things? Yeah, but I don't really want to be here. Oh, you don't even want to get near this little guy. No, I don't. It's a little time bomb. Oh. I call it car roulette. Really? Yep. So, I'm going to go back to the office now. Oh, that's nice. Love you too. Okay. All right, I saved one for you. You guys can see it with the solder flowing right into them two wires. Pretty crafty. Don't want to burn my digits. So we'll just do it slow. I can smell the skin. There she is, soldered and heat shrinked. All in one. I'll wait for that little guy to cool down. I'll put a link to these in the description. Don't have a lot of experience with them can't form an opinion on them. However, in the past, back when I was a young buck, I had me an 81 CJ Scrambler. And I used a form of these, not this brand, but I used several solder and seal heat shrink connectors. Probably from Napper at the time because I was working with my old man. We bought a lot of stuff there. And with that being said, after I had that Jeep for, I don't know, three or four years, and about a year into it, Random things started happening. I'd lose a reverse light. I'd lose a tail light. Cooling fan would quit working. All kinds of stuff. And every single time, it was one of these connectors. The solder joint would crack over time. And it got very frustrating. But the good news was, whenever I had an electrical issue, I knew exactly where to go. Oops, twisting her the wrong way, fella. That could be a little, we'll wrap back up. So hopefully that's not the case this time around. The connector is now gone. What we'll do, that's got a spot for a zip tie. We'll black tape the snot out of this thing, just because. Try to make it look halfway presentable, even though ain't nobody ever gonna see it except us folks. And we'll stick that back there and then we'll take it for a shimmy, see if these speed sensors work. I suppose we could have tested them prior to doing this, but being that both of them didn't work and the connector was I'll chowder it up. It's a good guess anyways. We're on a low sodium diet. New York is not the place to be. We'll get out the old scotch two inch. We're gonna roll down this sucker.
It ain't pretty, but we're going for function. And what we'll do is we'll double roll up it. That way if we got it open again, it's a real pain. somewhere Dodge all of the bombs. I left her up on the lift with the back wheels up a little bit. Where's the on button? There we are. Doody do. We'll pop back in here. We'll pop back into chassis. And then we will go back into. Let's clear our fault codes just in case. All right, ABS light is now out. We'll go into data stream. We want rear left. We want rear right. Let's fire it up. Dropper and drive. Whoa, must be the back brakes don't work, but the speed sensors do. Well, lucky, lucky. That's forward. That's reverse. Oh, let me see if the speedo works. Hey, the speedometer is working too. Whoop de doo. So let's go back this way. So now, if we go back into the ECM, let me just shut it off so I don't, I don't have a hose on it. I don't want to fog myself out. We'll see. I'm curious to see if our pending code is gone now. Nope, still, still pending code there, so perhaps we haven't met code criteria yet for that to disable. But we will go into data stream. Go all the way back down to the bottom. Vehicle speed, let OK. After this communicates, we'll fire this rig up. And of course, that should work now because the speedo was working. Dropper and drive. Look at that. Speedo's working. Can you guys see that over here? There you go. Give you a little light. Well, that works. Alright. Oh, good. Now, the next thing. This is the important thing. Don't get all code clear happy now because I'm going to tell you but I can't do two things at once. Uh, what we want to do we want to end this session we want to go back into OBD2. Like I say, this is an older fella, and sometimes these guys are kind of diff hard to talk to in the sense of explaining, like, hey, you know, your money light might come back on. I guess what I'm getting at is I want to check readiness monitors. Is this the only code, or is this the only, yeah, is this the only code? Are all the other monitors set? Because that's important. Now, if we go in here, is it still searching, protocol searching? Oh, yeah, there it goes. Um, if we go in here and the monitors aren't set, then we have to try to reiterate to the customer the best that we can that you potentially could have more problems as these monitors run. Because with a PO500, I'm going to assume it has inhibited other monitors right there. Look at that, bada bing, bada boom. So monitors not complete, two of them. Five of them are complete, two of them have not run. So that is a potential for other codes. And that's what we need to know. Let's see. 
Let's see who's not run. Catalyst, that sucks, and EVAP. Everything else is a go. There is a potential for a PO4 whatever. In this case, 420, 430, 444, 440, 456, whatever. Um, yikes. Ain't that a pisser. I kind of assumed it was going to be the case. So what we can do is we'll go back in here. We'll go back into Toyota. We'll load back up. We'll put it in check mode. And we'll take it for a shimmy. And we'll see what's going to happen. I would much rather call this guy and say, yes, you know, we ran a drive cycle on it. Or, you know, all the EVAP, something like that. And then tell him, you know, maybe what else is going to be going on. So, so backed outside, we should be in check mode. Make sure here. Okay, yeah, we are. So the vehicle is in check mode. So it's kind of unique to Toyotas, uh, and it's a really cool feature. So what this typically does is this allows us to run a drive cycle very quickly. This, I think, is going to bypass two trip monitors, things like that. So it'll run a drive cycle fairly quickly. Uh, the engine is cold, or just what little bit we had it running. So what I'm going to do, and it will stay in check mode until you shut the key off. So if you're driving one of these and you're trying to get through inspection or whatever, I'm obviously not going to put a sticker on this thing. But um, this allows you to make sure that it's going to run a drive cycle. So when you give it back to customer, you can confidently say, hey, you know, you're good to go, or you know, no, you're going to have a bunch of problems when you unhook or what yeah when you unhook when you turn off the key it goes back to normal mode it resets all your monitors again so if you're trying to get one through inspection you're driving it in check mode and you see all the monitors set don't shut the key off because as soon as you turn it off it's going to reset this is just kind of a check for the technician to say you know yes i did my job i did it well you know if, whether you're trying to get it to pass just one code uh, something like that. So uh, I'm going to take her for a shake down the row ad and see what happens. All of our snow has melted. There. Here comes the car. We got to go. I never did call him to ask him how long that ABS light's been on. I'm kind of curious. This is annoying. I'm kind of curious to know if, like let's say it had just one working speed sensor in the back, would that speedometer still work? I don't know. I guess the only way we could figure that out is, you know, experimenting, unplugging a speed sensor, stuff like that. But you see how crusty this thing is underneath. Uh, unplugging a speed sensor is probably going to create issues, so at least sleeping dogs lie. Pulled over here for a minute. I want to see if it threw any. Uh, see if it. Whoa! Hang on, Bella. I want to see if it threw any pending codes on our short little trip here. So so far so good. No codes. Let's just pop back here. No, we do not want to quit. We want to ah, accidentally quit. Wait for this load up. I want to read mode one. I want to see what our readiness monitors are at currently. Had a cop right on my tailpipe the whole way. Couldn't even do any texting. I had to put my seatbelt on and everything. Go ahead, okay, we're gonna go to mode one data. So this can be found on any generic OBD tool. Even like your little $30 code reader is gonna have all this. We got passes, pass, 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 pass. We're back to where we were. The we are back to EVAP and catalyst. Now I don't know if these are gonna run in check mode. We might be able to get catalyst EVAP, I'm doubting. But let's head back to the shop see what happens ah, pulling over hang on fellas the money light just came on so that tells me another monitor just ran Oops. ABS is kicking on it's a little slippery yeah right. I was just flicking through some data I got stuck behind a log truck let's go let's see what mode one says let's see what monitor ran catalyst monitor ran so you know what that means. The show is not over because she's going to have a catalyst code and I guarantee it. And this is why we do this. This is why we do this. Let's 
Let's see, I forgot the odor. That way you can translate our manufacturer specific codes if there is any. Uh oh. The classic PO420. Current and pending. That sucks. This truck is probably not worth the converter. Oh gosh. Well, uh, I can only hope at this point. Here, let me flip the camera on so I can speak at you. As I was mentioning, I can only hope at this point it will run the EVAP monitor. We can see we've got six completes. Hopefully, you can. Six completes, one incomplete, which is just the EVAP. From the looks of that tank and stuff, I wouldn't doubt it if this thing had EVAP codes too. Unfortunately, with that PO500, it was never running these monitors because a lot of these monitors, Catalyst, EVAP, even some O2 monitors, depends on the vehicle, it needs to see certain criteria, and that is, you know, engine at a certain temp, vehicle speed at a certain speed for a certain amount of minutes. So without the speed sensor working, it would have never ran these monitors. So if he's been having this problem for a long time, this is the, the problem that you can run across. This is difficult to reiterate to a customer because it come in to have the engine light fixed. The good news is the ABS light is out, the speedometer works, so we fixed a problem. I just hope I can uh, explain to them that there's more problems beyond this. This is my, if it doesn't run the EVAP monitor, it may come down to a case where, you know, let's say we check it and we find that, you know, yes, the, you know, the catalytic converter on this thing is spanked, which it probably is, got 160,000 on it. We, at that point, we have to say, okay, so we, we have to, you know, sir, we have to put a catalytic converter on it to fix that code after we do that you may have more problems you know it's the truth i know it's the truth but to somebody who might not understand it sounds skeptical it sounds fishy but it is just the way it is i try to explain to them the best that i can and you know we go from there so i guess we're going to call it quits on this one i'm going to keep driving see if i do get the evap monitor to run i doubt that i will uh not the right criteria today and then I'm going to take it from there. Uh, of course, I'm going to, I already pulled up O2 sensor data. I'm going to see how this cat's working uh, as I drive down the road. I mean, right now it's switching just like the upstream. So uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. If you guys have any questions about this, put them down in the comment box below. Any criticisms on the fix we did, make sure you put them down there too. And while you're down there, click subscribe, ring the bell, find us around our socials, Patreon, all that stuff. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. Check this out, guys. I was just on my way back to the shop and I look up in that tree and I see what I thought was just a bald eagle. But there's actually two bald eagles. I don't know how good that's zooming or focusing. But that's pretty cool. Aw, oh, did they just talk? America right there, folks. So right back there, below that tree, is the river. And I often see the bald eagle flying over here, eating out of the river. You know, collecting fish and whatnot. That's pretty cool. I've never seen two of them together.